Hello everyone, myself Bharadwas. Today in this video, I will discuss about one interesting example. Here there are two outputs and one input. So we have to control two outputs with one push button. If the push button is pressed and released immediately, then output one will be on or off. If the output one is in off state, then it will be in on state. Okay. Again, if the push button is pressed and released immediately for a short moment, then again the output one changes its state. Initially, it is in off state, so it will be in on. For every time if you press and release the push button, the output one will be in on state to off state or off state to on state, it will change. Okay. The default start first time state is off state. Remember that. If the push button is pressed and it is hold for 5 seconds or more than 5 seconds, then the output 2 will be controlled. The, de the default state or the first time state is in off state. When we press the input push button for 5 seconds, press and hold for 5 seconds, then output 2 will be on. Again, it is released and again, the push button is pressed for 5 seconds, then output 2 will be off. In simple terms, if the push button is pressed and released immediately, then output 1 will be in control, stay, output 1 will be controlled, okay. If the push button is pressed and hold for 5 seconds or more than 5 seconds, then output 2 will be controlled, okay. So, the main objective here is we have only one push button, but we are independently controlling two outputs, okay. The output 1 state and output 2 state doesn't matter, only depends on the push button uh, timing, how much time it is pressed depends on it. The outputs will be controlled independently, okay. So, pause the video here and try to solve this logic. We have one input which is push button and two outputs, digital outputs. With one input, you have to independently control two outputs. Try to solve this logic. Okay. Now I will explain the program. I will go to the software. I will take one input. And I will take two outputs. I will add the comment. This is my push button. Okay. And Q1 is my output 1. And Q2 is output 2. Okay. So, for controlling each output, I will take one pulse relay block. Okay. So, go down, scroll down, and select pulse relay. And give the block name pulse relay. And for the second one, also give the block name. Now I will connect the output of pulse relay to the output 1. Similarly, for second pulse relay also, connect output 2. Now for output 2, I need one timer, on delay timer. For after 5 seconds only, the output 2 will be controlled. That is why I taken one on delay timer. Okay, and select okay, 5 seconds. Okay, now connect the push button to the on delay timer input 
and the output of on delay timer connect to the pulse relay. The output two program is completed. Now we have to make the program for the output one. Now go to basic functions and select NAND edge falling edge. Remember that we have to take falling edge block. The arrow must be in downside and take one end block also. These two are important blocks here. Give the block name NAND falling edge. And this one is, I will just enter and click OK. Now connect push button to the first input of the falling edge, NAND block, and connect the output of the block to the first input of AND block, and connect the AND output to the pulse relay input trigger. Okay. Now connect the output of on delay timer to the NAND falling edge last input. Again, similarly, connect on delay timer output to the end last input, fourth input. Okay. Now add not input. I mean, this on delay timer is there, right? Two inputs connected. Here, just add the not gate. Double click here on the line. One bubble will appear. That means not is added. Again, here also double click. Bubble will come. Not is added. Now the program is completed. Just adjusting these lines for your simulation purpose, there is no need to adjust. Now open the PLC hardware and Download the program. Transfer PC to logo. If you don't have the hardware with you, do the simulation and test the logic. Okay. Yes. Program is downloading. Now I will go to the online mode. Select IP and click OK. Also follow our YouTube channel, social media networks. You will receive more updates in future. OK, now we will test the logic. I will press the input I1 C. What happens? One time press and release it immediately. The output one is in on state. Output one is in on state. Again, I will press the input I1 and again I will release immediately. Output one off. Again, press and release. Output one on. Press and release off. Press and release. What happens? 
if you press and release immediately what happens the output one is in switching to on state and off state accordingly as per the input push button okay if you see for the output 2 if I press the push button and hold for 5 seconds or more than 5 seconds, the on delay timer will be started. Now it is 0. See what happens? Timer started. After 5 seconds, it will be on. Then pulse relay output will be on. Q2 will be on. The pulse relay output will change to on state to off state or off state to on state. Every time the input trigger changes its state from 0 to 1. That is why if I press it again the input I1 for 5 seconds, after 5 seconds the delay timer will be on. That means pulse relay input is received. Already previously it is in on state, now it makes output off. If again I will press the input I1 for 5 seconds, then again on delay timer will be on after 5 seconds. Pulse relay received its input, again output is in on state. The output too you can easily understand. There is not that much logic is not there. See, timer is running three seconds. Now I will release the push button before five seconds. What happens? Q2 there is no effect, but Q1 is in on state. Okay. Now we will discuss the the program part is completed. Output 2 is very clear, just push button, timer, pulse relay, output. You have to understand output 1 stat logic only. Here, the NAND falling edge block and end block are important. Okay. We taken NAND falling edge because we considered the push button release state for the controlling of output 1. Observe, I will press the push button. Okay, I will press the push button and again release it. When the output changes state, when I press the push button, at that time there is no change. Here, when we release the push button, the release time is considered. For that purpose, we take an NAND falling edge. Okay. If you if I press the input I1, the output one will not be on. See, if I release the input I1 before five seconds, then the output one will be on. For that purpose, we take an NAND falling edge. Okay. And here. This output one will be controlled, okay, will be switched on state and off state only when the output two is not controlled, okay. If push button is pressed for five seconds or more than five seconds, then that signal must be used for only for output two. If the push button is pressed for momentary or less than five seconds, then that signal must be used for output one. For that purpose, we need one interlock. Okay. That is why the on delay timer output is connected to NAND falling edge and end block. So, most uh, this is the concept. And use the same logic, simulate the logic, and explain why we added the bubble, not gate, and why we used the combination of NAND falling edge and end block with not gates for the output one functionality so explain or share with us through the comment section okay why the not gate and why the combo of nand falling edge and end block this is the first question and the second task is our second question is here we use nand falling edge and end blocks right now try to simulate or try to achieve this 
same program or functionality using some other blocks combination instead of NAND following it and end block. Okay. Try to do the same program using other blocks. Program means I'm talking about only these two blocks. NAND and end. Replace these blocks with some other blocks. If you are able to achieve some same functionality, share with us how you achieve this. Remember, when you are learning the PLC programming, it doesn't matter how many blocks you are going to use. You can use 10 blocks, 20 blocks, no problem. Just use any number of blocks and try to achieve the functionality, try to achieve the objective. When you have good experience with the programming, then you can think about the optimization of the blocks or using less number of blocks to achieve the output. Okay. When you are learning the programming, it doesn't matter how many blocks you are going to use. The first thing is you have to solve the problem. And when you are practicing, when you achieved some experience with the PLC programming, then you can think about the optimization okay some people directly go for the optimization okay the optimization is not required when you are a beginner so this is one of the tip i want to give with you thank you i will meet you in the next video